Mark Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we are taking a look at DJ Studio. It is the DAW for DJs. If you've never made mixes before, it's also the easiest software to do this with. It is pretty mind-blowing how streamlined it is and how something like this hasn't existed before. So let me just show you around and we'll do it by just quickly making a mix. So we're gonna go over here to create new mix. I'm gonna go to use local files, but it interfaces with like everything. If you have DJ software, uh, for example, Rekordbox, and you're concerned about it working with this, it does. It, it's been really, really well thought out and done. So I'm gonna go for local files. We're gonna do a quick base, base house mix. I like running to these things. Uh, I mostly run rather than like go to raise or dance or clubs or anything. And for me, it's, a, it's an exercise thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in some bass house tracks. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go for these 10 and it's gonna add them. Uh, we've got our two decks here and you, you can export this as a set if you'd like to, it's something you could perform. Uh, we're just gonna make a mix. So at the top, we have our playlist. That is the order the songs go in. Our library, if we wanna add more songs in our studio, this is where we do all the mixing and the, the cool stuff. To navigate, if you scroll your mouse wheel, it'll scroll to where your mouse is currently at. And if you click on the background left and anywhere that's blank, you can move left and right. So some important things. We're gonna go to the playlist area. And the first thing we need to consider is the order the songs are in. So you can come through here and manually move them around or you can come in and go to auto mix and this will suggest an order for you. And there's a whole bunch of controls in here that allow you to sort of specify it. And you can, of course, always change things manually if there's some songs you want to go next to each other. I'm just going to click auto mix. It's going to look at it and try and put them in an order that will work harmonically. So we'll click finish. It'll look at our tempo too. Here, the tempos are also similar. It basically doesn't matter. Uh, and then here we can see it has done its best to make things work harmonically. And this is great when you're mixing because if you're going from one drop to another and say you want to cut right into the next, another song's drop, you want them to have similar notes. If they have totally different notes, it's going to sound weird and not very good. So part of that's just knowing your tunes. Uh, but it's also pretty nice that it, it takes care of this for us. It could be quite tedious and a long process to sometimes work this out. So it's nice to have a starting point. So with this done, let's go over to studio and get mixing. Uh, along the bottom, there's controls for what shows up down here. The ones we're going to care about mostly are the transition page. This is where we can control the effects for transitions and possibly the effects page. Uh, this will allow us to control global effects and areas that are not in a transition window uh, if we want to create something sort of like mix it up in the middle. Uh, so transitions though, these areas at the ends are probably going to be the first things we go after. And this is where we're going to do some magic. I do want to briefly mention here that if you use record box and you like the phrase data that it gives you, uh, you can use that inside of DJ Studio. It will pop up, it'll show up at the bottom, and it's, it's really, really nice. And to select a portion of a song, you'll hold shift, click, drag, and you can easily cut out parts and add, well, you can, you can put more parts in if you want. Uh, take something from one song and add it in. Let's take a look here. So in these windows at the end of a track, we can click. It'll zoom us to this particular transition and we can sort of make decisions on if this is what we want to have happen. So by default, it is using, if we go to our transition page here at the bottom, the base swap preset. And the presets are great starting points. I recommend looking at them. Uh, so let's just take a look at what it sounds by default. This works so well with what's going on here. Now we might want to deal with sort of how it fades in and out. My first recommendation is just to try out the presets. We're on base swap and within base swap, we have all these different equalizer effects. Uh, we can have something like we fade in mids, we fade out the mids, we swap them. 
for the bass, let's go ahead and do a crossfade and just see what that sounds like. Something that's really gonna sell it though is potentially an effect, which is in here. We have some effects. We could, for example, bring in some noise. We could have a swoosh sound in the middle, uh, which would sound like this. And you can see it sort of here. And there, you can even manually do one and drag one in. Maybe we want it to come up in sort of a weird way and come down in a weird way. Well, well, it's really going to make it great and control Z1 do these sort of moves that we've done because uh, I actually think the bass swap sounds quite, quite nice uh, is the stem option. So if you come down here to stems or if you click on this little stamp icon, I'll click on it down here. I, I actually normally click this one, but you'll get the stems for the songs. So these are the stems and you can see the individual parts. So if we go ahead and solo one, and you can mute the different sections. So for example, here's just the drums or what it thinks is the drums. So for example, we have this vocal part here and we can actually just, you know, drag that over so that it doesn't show up until we want it to. And maybe we want it to fade in. And now if we unmute or unsolo, my apologies, over here and we listen to this. Now we won't have this come in until it's really relevant and we've really finished this out. And we could also fade this one out. So much cleaner and you can do stuff like this all over the place. You can steal parts from other songs and stick them in other places. And I mean, you just, you just rock and roll. So say it's like, okay, we're good with this transition. You could see here, and this is the, this is the creative part. This is where you have fun. You get in there, you, you find different transitions. Now we could have probably just picked crossfade, but the ability to, to selectively remove parts and, and sort of make sure things don't clash is all there for you. We could come into effects. And here, I think it would actually be kind of nice if we had a reverb that just sort of came in and we can choose where this reverb is going to fade up and on. And let's go ahead and put it right around here. And let's just hear what that sounds like. So this is gonna bring a reverb up. If you're unfamiliar, reverb is like the sound of like the room that you're in. So if you're in a big room, it's going to have a lot of reverb and be sound very echoey and big. That's what we're going for here. So we might actually just put that at the end. It sounds like it's going to be the call here. Right around where the fade takes place. See, this is where you could spend a while. And away you go. So the effects are a great way to do that. Let's go ahead, let's take a look at the next one. So we're gonna go ahead and click. And of course you could come in, maybe change up how long the song is, um, mix it up with another song, take the drop from one, stick it where the other one is, all kinds of cool stuff. Let's look at the next crossfade though, right? These are gonna be the main things we're gonna be concerned with at the beginning. I mean, it works really well there. Let's really quick just check. So we can move the window by just simply shifting it along and it will automatically deal with sort of muting the stuff after according to the effect that we pick. So it's really easy to move the transition around. In fact, let's say that, hey, you know, I liked how it was the first time. Maybe we move it over, but I'd like to start out somewhere a little more popping. 
So let's say right here, I like that. I'm gonna hit Control E just to place a marker so I can see where I am. And let's say that we wanna use that section instead. And then right here, maybe we wanna do a hard drum swap. Uh, so what we could do is we can just click our little stamp tool here. I'm not sure if it's called the stamp tool, but I'm used to, I mean, it looks like a stamp. And let's grab this and pull the drums out on the top and we'll pull these back. And let's see how that goes. That'll be a lot cleaner, I think. And then here we can immediately start the fade out. Do you want to completely remove it? Up to you. This is the vocal. And away you go. And this dramatically affects, you know, how sort of how the pacing would feel. You'd expect it to keep going. And you get that change up. Part of the gloriousness of doing a mix and having these sort of moments where you're like, oh, that was nice. And of course, you'd take your time, you'd come in, you'd make each of your transitions, and then you'd go into the middle of the tracks and look at things you could possibly change up. Maybe you switch up drops between songs, switch up verses, maybe remove verses, all that good stuff. Once you're all done, you can come up here to export, choose uh, your settings here. You can leave it all a default. If you wanna go to make an actual DJ set, there are options for that or publish to a specific platform. In this case, I just wanna render it out. We'll do it as a WAV file. And if you have WAV files, use the WAV file to get you know the higher quality recording. And if you're just using MP3s, there's no benefit to rendering out as a WAV file. Just use the MP3. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go to export and it'll run it and you're done. You've got yourself a mix. If you have any questions about anything you've seen here, feel free to drop them down below. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.